Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I'm excited to share our podcast today. Jamie, who you get to listen to talk about her journey, is super honest about going into an industry that had nothing to do with her education and some of the ups and downs and the learning moments in that. I just think that you'll take a lot away from this. And then at the end, she wraps up with um, her platform in pageantry, which I think will really inspire you. So welcome to the podcast. So thank you for joining me on the podcast today. I'm super excited for this interview. And I would love, so I generally just have women start with their story. And you have so many pieces to your story, which is amazing. But I would love if you would start with kind of your, you and I talked a little bit about your journey to kind of self-awareness maybe would be a good way to say it. So if you would start with that, I would love that. Well, thank you so much for inviting me and having me here today. I'm so excited to be here and to share my story and my journey. Um, Yes, it has been quite the journey as we all have a journey in life and we all learn from our mistakes and have lessons that we're here to learn. Um, Growing up, I love to play in the woods, love to explore, get dirty, be adventurous. And uh, as time went on, I realized I was trying to check boxes for other people and fulfill other people's wishes that they wished for me. Mm -hmm. And that became a little hard. (laughs) And I realized it wasn't my favorite thing to do. And when I was 21, I was in college and my mom died suddenly. And I would find out very soon afterwards that I was pregnant with my son. And um, going through the grief process, as well as having my son, I became lost And I allowed, again, other people to start living my life for me. And I wasn't always making the best choices. Um, And that wasn't until about five years later, I was able to grieve properly and process the loss of my mom. And through that process, I was able to learn to love myself and, you know, the color of my skin, the curl of my hair, the curves of my body, and know that I am enough the way I am, the way that I was made in it's amazing, though, because you that's really young, actually, for for a lot of women, it will take them a much longer journey to get there. So heartbreaking that you lost your mother. But in that, it's a huge blessing for you. I'm sure that you've realized that now. Everyone's journey is different. And that's what makes this world so beautiful is that there is differences and a variety. Because mm-hmm. if everyone was the same, that would be so boring. Yes. It was right? so boring. <laughs> but yeah, we compare ourselves to people all the time. Like we're supposed to be the same for some reason. For some reason. I, you know, I think social media sometimes plays a part in that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, understanding and realizing that there's more than what you see at the surface and realizing and knowing that there's more to everyone and there's more to everyone's story. And once you love yourself, you're able to love others around you and the community around you and be a better human and just be a ball of light that attracts just the best energy because that's the energy you're putting off. Yeah, so true. It's so funny because you and I talked about that when you walked in this morning about social media being such a like a lie, really, even for those of us that try to be super honest on it, it's still just this tiny little fraction of who we are. And yet I think sometimes um, we look at it and we assume things, right? Yeah. Yes, for sure. I think um, as a role model, as a young woman in our community, I mean, truly on social media, it's just a blink of what happens Mm -hmm. in my life. There's a lot of things that I don't post and I don't share, um, but absolutely trying to show up as authentic as I can Mm -hmm. and um, still branding because it's essentially branding what you're doing on social media. Um, Not you individually, but just just everyone. Yes, Yes. (laughs) everyone on social media is is branding. But we don't hear about the, you know, my family member having cancer or, Mm -hmm. you know, a family member having a surgery um, or those type of things. It's mostly just the highs. It's all you share is the good news. Mm -hmm. And I have shared a couple of losses that I've experienced personally on social media to let people know that, you know, it's not always just rainbow glitter and unicorns. There's 
highs and lows that come with life. And those are the amazing lessons that we learn and that make us better moving forward so we can be just an all around better human. Yeah. Let's so let's take that and talk about your highs and lows in business because you are a very, very successful business owner. And um, one of the things that I would love for you to share is how did that journey happen? Because again, I think a lot of people will look at it and think, oh, well, she was just naturally gifted or she's just naturally this. That's why she's had success. So I would love for you to share some of that path for you. Absolutely. So let me start with that. I have two degrees that I do not use. (laughs) (laughs) I love that you said that. (laughs) Two college degrees I don't use, um, one in geology and uh, a master's in secondary education. Um, I'm happy for the the journey that it took me to have those degrees, Mm -hmm. um, but also I'm sure as many as your guests or listeners might be aware of or viewers is that there's there's debt often associated with uh, with student with with going to college. Uh-huh. Um, most yeah. of us aren't prepared for that, and I was definitely not in a position that I was prepared for that. So I have two degrees that I'm not using. Um, however, there was a lot of experiences throughout life that prepared me for my entrepreneurial journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I didn't know what was I didn't know I was going to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know I was going to be self employed. Um, I thought I was always going to work for the man, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but now I know that I would probably not be a very good employee. And I probably wasn't the best employee when I was an employee. Um, so when it was 2015, I had just finished my master's degree and finished my student teaching. And at that time, um, I had recently quit a job overnight. I just was done. <laughs> and I knew I was done with it. And um, I had applied for an account executive position for a local radio station. And I was very excited about this opportunity because it was all just based on drive and going out there and getting your sales and getting people to want to advertise with the radio station. And I was honored and excited. And finally, I felt like I had a big girl job. Mm-hmm. And it, although it was a job, it had a lot of flexibility and freedom. Um, being my own boss in a sense of making my own income and mm-hmm. determining how much I'm going to make. And... My boyfriend at the time, now husband, we decided to start a business, a multifamily construction company. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I knew nothing about being an entrepreneur. I knew nothing about construction. Truly nothing about construction at all. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't even know. Well, your degrees definitely didn't touch on construction. (laughs) Not much at all. I mean, geology is typically involved in like the phase one, you know, doing core samples and analysis of the soil (laughs) and, you know, permeation of the soil, contamination, those type of things. Uh But, uh, permeability of the soil, sorry. (laughs) Um, But definitely nothing to do with building Mm -hmm. vertically beyond that. And uh, I had a lot to learn. So in the closet of our bedroom, because our garage was too small, not insulated, wasn't an option. Um, It was more of a storage unit. Um, In the closet of our primary bedroom, we started our construction company, Perryman Construction Management. And I was on quite the journey. Um, We did not have much money because at that time I was unemployed other than working for this company that was yet to be profitable. Mm -hmm. And my boyfriend at the time, now husband, um, he too was unemployed and working for the company that had yet to be profitable. Um, And so we're on Craigslist looking for a desk. We're you know, trying to find an IT person that can help us get set up and get the right computer and printer that we need. And at one point, we were struggling financially so greatly that we started selling things just to keep the lights on, mm-hmm. the the heat on in the house, the roof over our head, just to pay our monthly bills. We were selling everything that was of any type of value. Um, I mean, you name it, we probably sold it. Shoes, clothes, accessories. Um, if we had extra measuring cups, like anything we could sell to make money. <laughs> so your vision for what the company was going to be was obviously very strong if you were willing to go to those links, right? I mean, I think that sometimes when people see the kind of business that you have now, they they envision this road that is not quite that drastic where you're selling your shoes and your clothes, right? But 
But if you if your vision was big enough that, hey, this is just going to be a blip on our path, obviously that must have been where you were. It's such an interesting thing for me, that concept, because I've listened to so many entrepreneurial journeys over the years, and they all have struggles, right? Some of them are yours. Some of them are a little bit different. But I love that you said that because I think it really just shows, number one, how committed both of you were, that you weren't just going to quit when something was difficult. Um, But obviously, you then came out on the other side of it with this amazing company. So you got through that. What was the next what was the next step in that? Did you immediately start to have success or was it like up and down? How did that play out for you? Absolutely. There's still ups and downs mm-hmm. and in any business. There's yes. still good days, great days, and days that are just like, okay, I learned a lot here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know to yep. do better next time. Yep. Um, so still through that journey, we still had to learn better communication, um, working with your partner. Mm-hmm. That is a challenge in and of itself trying to leave personal at home and work at work was mm-hmm. a very big challenge for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and even finding profit profit in what we were building and creating, um, there were still challenges because the market was changing. Lumber prices don't stay the same. And so learning how to... Um, learning how to communicate with our suppliers and our vendors, as well as our subcontractors, to ensure that we were providing the best quality and price for our people we were building for, our Mm -hmm. our clients. So you're looking at your clients and thinking, okay, now we're delivering, and now we're going to essentially like take it up a notch, right? Which is where you have gone with that. What was that communication like between the two of you? How did that happen? Yes. So I decided to become an FAA licensed drone pilot. And as far as I know, I could be, you know, could be wrong on this, but we were one of the first construction companies in the state of Idaho to be sharing and posting drone footage of our projects, updates, and even to our clients, sending them images. Mm -hmm. Even as recently as a few months ago, we had a client that was like, hey, would you mind flying over this project and taking a quick picture? Because we want to do this layout over here. Mm -hmm. Great. Not a problem. Um, So that was one thing that helped, I I felt, helped launch us into a different category, um, as well as putting, you know, getting a website going. I built the website. And since then, it's been redone by an amazing team that we have Um, We have an office full of people that did what I once did even better than I ever could. And I'm so grateful for them. Yeah, I I like that. I had a really, um, a mentor of mine years ago say, as soon as you can hire someone better than you, like you're in a great place. Absolutely. (laughs) That that, that piece, that nugget is really powerful. (laughs) It is very important to know when to step aside and to know that there's someone better than you Mm -hmm. out there, even though it's your dream, it's your passion, it's what you put your blood, sweat, and tears into, and the sleepless nights, and the waking up and like, oh, I forgot to do this, or Mm -hmm. oh, did I do that? And you're, or waking up and you're just so excited for the day because you have that one phone call or you have that meeting that you've been looking forward to, that opportunity. It's the things that people don't see Mm -hmm. that makes this journey so much fun Mm -hmm. and so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The rewarding pieces are oftentimes the most challenging ones, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But definitely, absolutely step aside when when <laughs> someone comes in who knows what they're doing. Yeah. It's okay to not always be in the driver's seat. Yeah. Sometimes Put the ego in check. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. And that was a journey for me as well because I was, yeah, I, was, I was young. I was still in my 20s at that time. Yeah. You were very successful at a very young age. So, okay, so let's shift gears a little bit and let me ask you the question that I ask all of my guests, which is, do you remember when you hit six figures and how did that feel for you, especially given, you know, all of the things that you went to to achieve that? Yes. So when we hit six figures, um, I can't say I truly honestly remember that moment, Mm -hmm. but I can say I do remember when I paid off my student loans and that was well over six figures. I mean, it was, it was a solid six figures. And, um, I mean, I, can I share? Yeah. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So gosh, so how I, I would always joke I'd be like, Oh yeah, that Ferrari that you didn't see in the parking lot because it was my student loan debt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> paid that off. Um, so 
the moment that I paid off my student loan debt, I was in tears. I was so grateful. I w- had so much gratitude and just the feeling, the relief of yeah. it just being lifted off my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, being able to purchase properties mm-hmm. around the country mm-hmm. um, just because of investing and just building and buying properties and mm-hmm. selling them. It's just been an amazing journey. Yeah, that's really awesome. So let's let's shift to parenting in that. You were parenting through that entire process. So what is your what is your best mom tip for those out there that are, you know, either in a corporate environment where they're really excelling or starting an entrepreneurial journey and their moms at the same time, which is all of our listeners. So talk to me about your what wisdom do you have on the mom side? So as a mom, I would recommend always being there for your child. Um, I, growing up, I didn't have my parents around to pick me up from school or drop me off from school. You know, unless I was sick, they would come get me from school um, or had an appointment or something of that nature. But being there for my son and being able to pick him up from school and Mm -hmm. being able to take him to school. And if he's sick, you know, not having to worry about asking someone, you know, hey, is it okay if I leave to go get my son? For me, that part of my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey Mm -hmm. has been a lot for me. Mm -hmm. And being able to attend his classroom plays in the middle of the day, um, always be there for your children because Mm -hmm. they're going to be gone before we know it. And then there's that weird age that I've been warned about where they don't really acknowledge you (laughs) as a as a human (laughs) more of just like oh you're a parent what do you know you've never experienced that you know because i I never do that to my parents of course not you know (laughs) i I never pretended that i knew everything yes i did oh my gosh that's so funny on the way here i was texting with a dear friend of mine and um he was talking about his son instructing him on driving because he just got his driver's license. And I said, oh, don't you know your teenager knows everything? Everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. So much more than you could ever know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that is not a lie. I mean, I lived it. <laughs> My mom had a magnet on the refrigerator that said, ask your teenager while they still know all the answers. I I think back to that and think, oh my gosh, so true. It's so true. And I tell my dad, you know, the older I get, the smarter he becomes. Like, like, oh, he actually is. He knows something. He's pretty wise. There (laughs) is wisdom in age. Who knew? Absolutely there is. That's one thing I look forward to with getting older is the wisdom that comes with it. Yeah. Well, you're pretty wise. Thank you. Okay. Last question. Book or podcast, is there one that you would recommend to our listeners that has just been impactful for you? Oh, there's quite a few books that um, jump out to me. Um, Depending on everyone's journey, Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking more on the business side and wanting to work on structure of your business, it would be more profitable with documentation and processes and procedures in place. Mm -hmm. I would recommend Traction. Uh, that, that's, that's a really good book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and personally, if you're looking for confirmation, wisdom, and validation through life, manifestation, um, self-growth, and improvement, I would recommend starting with The Secret. Okay. And those are two that I would recommend as just like an entry level. Mm-hmm. And from there, I I can I can pull a list out if I we know, need it. Right? I can just roll it out here on the floor. And <laughs> I like that you said that though, because I do think that um so many of my my guests that have come before you, that's kind of the answer. Like, oh, well, I have a list of books, <laughs> right? It's good for people to hear, I think. Yeah. Um, anything that I didn't ask that you would want to share with the listeners? Um, I guess, you know, don't be afraid to be different. Mm, that's good. Truly. I mean, mm-hmm. and be the change that you wish to see in the world. If if you feel that something needs to be done, instead of saying, oh, I wish someone would do this, mm-hmm. just grab it by the reins. Do it. Because it's nothing's going to happen until you do it. And that is why I am competing. One of the many reasons I'm competing for Mrs. Idaho America is mm-hmm. I will be the first woman of color to hold the title as Mrs. Idaho America in the state of Idaho. And mm-hmm. there's generations of w- young women behind me that are going to be able to see someone who looks like them mm-hmm. and know that they too are enough to carry the crown and the legacy. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah. I have truly enjoyed my time with you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you so much for doing this. I 
I had hoped that you would talk a little bit about that piece of your journey because we're definitely cheering you on in that. I think it's going to be an amazing thing to see. So yeah, thank you for being with us. Thank you.